All right, in this video, we're going to take a next step into the world of pictorials. If you have gone ahead and you've created that oblique cavalier and you've done the uh, oblique cabinet, work through your two points perspective, and also the isometric cubes, then you've been playing around in pictorials. All right, now what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about how do we work with circles or holes uh, in an isometric drawing. So with this two by two cube, we're going to start working through how to create circles and holes. Well, first thing we're going to do is let's just do a quick uh, run through on how to create an isometric object in AutoCAD. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about the isometric drafting tool down here at the bottom. And then if you're going to start drawing an isometric, AutoCAD has these great tools here at, the, at, your, at your disposal, whether it's the polar tool to set and restrict angers, angles or your isometric drafting tool planes, they're all available. Now, if I were to turn uh, my AutoCAD, I uh, had it on, I'm turning it off. My cursor right now looks like the normal AutoCAD cursor. Okay. If I come down here and click on that isometric drafting tool, my cursor now changes. Okay. My cursor is green and red. All right. This is because it's starting to be set, it's set up on the isometric planes. All right. Now, if I hit the F5 key on my keyboard, notice how my cursor is now changing. And my command line is saying isoplane left, isoplane top. And as I keep hitting it, it's changing to different isometric planes. All right. An isometric plane is the surface on the uh, plane side. So this would be considered isoplane right. This is isoplane top. And this is isoplane left. Okay. Now, it's really important that when you guys start working through the isometric planes uh, and start getting into circles, you understand this tool needs to be turned on and you need to be on the isometric planes. All right. If you try to start drawing circles, uh, or I shouldn't even call them circles anymore because they're not circles. Okay. These are generally uh, axis end or ellipse uh, objects. Um, if you're using the proper terms, when you start doing that, you have to have that tool turned on. Now, let's just go ahead. I'm going to come up here and just some blank space. I'm going to grab my object viz la uh, layer. I'm going to grab my line tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just create uh, another isometric cube up here. Now, as I start moving my mouse up and I start creating this line, that locking point at 30 degrees is a really, really nice tool in that my... Um, polar tracking right now has been set to 30, 60, 90, and 120. And lo and behold, polar tracking is set on those same angles based off of isometric drawing. Okay. So you can always pull up your polar tracking or hit the pull down to get it to go up. You can go in and reset this. AutoCAD generally, uh, is set at that 90, 180, 270, 360. Okay. So that if I were to grab this line tool and I start drawing, it's not locking at 30, but it'll lock at 90, okay? And you can still draw isometrically this way, all right? If I were to click the 2 to give it the length, and then I hit tab, and then type in 30, and then hit enter, it's going to give me a 30-degree line, okay? This would still be a 30-degree line. But to make life even easier, and I tell you, make it easy as easy as easy can be, Hit the pull down and change this to 30, 60, 90, 120 when you're drawing ISOs. Okay. When you set this up and you grab that line tool and then you click and you start pulling out, it will then lock and give you that projection at 30 degrees. Okay. This is why I love isometric drawing. If you use these tools, you can't go wrong. All right. You just can't go wrong. On an isometric drawing, you cannot draw a line of length that is to a distance off of an isometric axis. So if you're going to give any line a particular length and you're going to type it in, it must be on an isometric axis. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this cube with that polar set to the 30, 60, 90. And I'm going to grab my line. I'm going to click and come up, lock at 30, type in 2, hit enter. I'm going to come straight up, 2 and enter. And now I'm coming back forward. Now it's not telling me 30. But it's giving me the complementary angle of 150, which is great. So we're going to lock this out. And now I'm coming out in this direction. We're going to go straight up. We're going to come back forward. Now I got my ISO right, my ISO left.
we're going to then finish off the tippity top of this thing here. And then if I did this correctly, this should come out here and lock at 30 degrees. Oh, look at that. This isn't right. 30 degrees is going to lock at this point. And you can see I am not locking out right here. That tells me right then and there was sloppy sloppy. Delete this line. Let's come back and find out where it went wrong. So make sure you lock at 30 degrees. Type in 2. Hit enter. Come on down this way. And now you can see I'm locking at 30 degrees. I'm going to hit that tip right where it needs to be. Slide on back. And you can see that 2 is going to work. So if you draw isometrically and you're set to your angles and things are working out, it's going to work out just fine. If it's not, something's not going to be right. Go back and figure out what happened. All right, so to start creating circles, arcs, uh, uh, end axis, ellipses, however we're all going to uh, end up calling these things, what we've got to do is we've got to come up to this tool. And I want you to pull down, uh, I think it's on center, all right, it's an ellipse tool. What I want you to do is pull the tool down, and you're going to come down to the axis end option, okay? When you click on the axis end option, you have to come down to your command line, okay? Your command line, after clicking that, gives you specific information. And it says, specify axis endpoint of ellipse or arc center iso circle. Click on iso circle. Okay. You are now setting up your first isometric circle. Okay. Now, if you do not have this option, okay, make sure that your isometric drafting tools are turned on. If I come over here and turn off my isometric drafting tools and I pull down axis end and I come down here, it says specify axis endpoint of ellipse or arc center. No ISO circle. Okay. Make sure that tool is turned on down here. Okay. So you have to end the command, turn it back on. Then you can grab it and it'll show up. So then click on ISO circle and now you're ready to, to draw an ISO circle. It says specify axis endpoint of ellipse, arc ISO circle. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to then click on that and then it says specify center of ISO circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out here in space and I'm going to left click and start pulling out. Okay. Now, as you start pulling out, don't click again. Just pull out and then hit F5 on your keyboard. F5, 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 F5. You can see this is now a dancing ISO circle. All right. What this is doing is changing the planes. And then I want you to look over here and see, well, which plane will this match up to? Which plane seems to make sense? Obviously, if you're on this particular plane, this is going to fit on the top. Okay, hit F5. This is going to be on ISO right, ISO left. Okay, so you really want to look at this and see which plane things are going to function in. All right, so... As we're coming out here, this is in radius right now, so I'm going to go ahead and say, let's type in 0.5. That gives us a diameter of 1. Okay? And since I drew mine on ISO left, that's great. If you were on top or right, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and I want to put it dead center of this object over here. Now, the thing about, um, you, you can't use, if you're going to go ahead and do this, the thing about these is if you go ahead and grab your move tool and you find center and you want to go see if you can get it, you don't get the geometric center to pop up, okay? You also can't necessarily use your midpoints to find all this information because it's, oh my golly, geez, look at that, it worked. You can use your midpoints if you sit and then mouse and then sit and then start mousing back over. You can set up your midpoints so that you get the projection just like that to find dead center, okay? So if your projection works, you can drop it in position. If that doesn't work for some reason, and it's just, ah, it's just too confusing, it's telling me all these O-snaps are working, draw a line. Just take and draw a line from one side to the other, and then use the midpoint, okay? So making and moving and positioning things, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Then find that midpoint, that little tr tr tricky triangle, click on that, and then delete the line, okay? Either way that works for you, that's the way you want to do it. All right, now the next thing that we're going to do is now we want to give this some depth, okay? Just like you can see here, this has some depth to it. It looks like this is sort of a hollowish type box going on here. Now we're going to take and we're going to select that circle. I shouldn't say ellipse. Got to get that right. Grab the copy tool. And then I like to grab it from the center. Grab the hole in the center. Click. 
and then move it way back on the isometric axis. Okay, that way I know I'm not getting tricked up in the in any of these O snaps or geometry, and I get to see a nice clean angle. I get the heads up that I see 30 degrees there all's well. Now let's just give this box some thickness now. So let's just say that this thing is 0.25 in thickness. So I type in 0.25 and hit enter. Then I hit escape, escape. Okay. Now this is the edge we would see right here. We don't see this edge. So trim trimity, goodbye. Now we have given this what would give it the you know impression of a thick box this is a 2.25 uh, box and it's hollow inside now if this thing was truly hollow inside we would see an edge down here this bottom edge so we could even take and sort of project that concept a little further make sure you're going at a 30 degree angle and then you can trim up what you would not see inside so this now gives it that illusion that this box is hollow there's a hole in it and there's an inside edge all right, so this is the basics of how to work with the ISO uh, circle tool, how to make ISO circles. Now, as I scroll out here and zoom around on my page, you can see that I've had a few of these. I've gone through this a few different times with some students. And what I've also shown students is how you can add some other features to your isometric drawing. All right, so if you want to add like a gradation to this where we get into some hatching process, or you want to give color to the inside of the box to make it look a little different, that's certainly something that can be done. It's very easy to do. Here you can look at this and see that there might be something inside the box and that these kerf marks, all right, or the section lining here could be the kerf mark of the drill bit where this was actually made uh, with this part. Here, this could be the drill bit going down the long tube shaft here so you can see this. So to do that, if you wanted to know how to do these things, uh, all of that stuff is going to come off of the draw bar. And if you pull down the hatch tool, which is directly underneath of the ellipse tool, you'll see hatch and gradient and boundary. So a hatch is where a pattern will be applied to an area. All right. And all you have to do is turn the hatch on and then click on the area and the hatch will show up. Once you select the hatch, if you wanted to change it, your ribbon bar changes and you can pick different hatches. Uh, there are a ton of different hatch patterns or section line patterns. Uh, you can also be called that loaded into AutoCAD. And you're more than happy if you want to go through and play with some of these. You're welcome to do that, to explore that, okay? Um, not completely necessary, but it's there. Now, if you would also pull down and grab the gradient tool, this is where the gradient comes into play. And you can then go in and start selecting pieces inside that box to give it that illusion that there is something inside, okay? So just a few little tips here. You can play around in AutoCAD if you want to do that. Um, but that's how the basics of making an arc is done.